Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. We're continuing our playthrough of Kingdom Death Monster, and right now we're fighting a monster, all right? This butcher has been doing a good number to us. We've done some damage to him, but he's also split our group into many different ways, and now we're stuck with just Xena and him standing toe-to-toe -to -toe while the rest of the group is down there trying to get back to this fight. Now before we continue the fight, I want to talk about a few things that happened in the last video that I need to correct. And I want to thank everybody in the comments section for helping me through some of the nuances and rules that I may get wrong or may get right. Sometimes in the heat of the battle, things don't go exactly as I'm thinking. So for example, our first one is this cleaver. I was originally doing this card right, and then I switched it up. It says the attacker's heart is frozen with dread. Attacker gains plus one insanity. Whether you wound this location or not, this takes effect. This doesn't have a reflex action or anything, so I was supposed to take plus one and say no matter who or how this turned out when it came to actually damaging it. Because of that, I gave Xena back up to four insanity. She was at three, but I gave her four because she actually didn't hit in the actual video, but she should have still got this no matter what. The other thing I did wrong was he's allowed to use survival actions at any time as long as there's an interruption in the card. For example, if we look here, he could while this character is picking his target, he can use his survival actions. He can use an action to stand her up. He has to use a survival action to stand her up. So because of that, I have gone ahead and taken a survival from Riverwind. He's down to two. And that's where we stand. I believe that's all the corrections, and I think we're going to be doing okay. Maybe we'll see how this goes. Now, sadly, that means he did have his action, which means he could have probably fired his bow at him while he was standing here. Instead, because I accidentally did say I was going to use his action to stand her up right over here, but that's okay. We're gonna see what we can do against this butcher. I have to make sure we keep our mistakes to a minimum because we can barely take this guy out. Look how far away our team is from him. All right, well, if you think we have what it takes to take down the butcher, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. So we're going to start by having the Butcher go, and he's going to start by using his fast target. At the beginning of each monster turn, reshuffle the Butcher's hit location deck. So we're going to take our hit location card, mix this up, and we're going to put it back. All right, so there it is. We're going to do one more little shuffle shuffle there, stick it back here, and he is now going to perform his Berserk, which is where he gets to draw plus one AI every monster turn. So his first attack is going to be Kick. It says closest threat facing. Closest threat, target no menace. No target menace, okay, well there's a target for sure. Speed two, four accuracy, one damage. After damage, target suffers knockback five and gains the priority target token. Oh, it's gonna be terrible. The butcher pursues the target, perform basic action. Oh wow, this is gonna be absolutely devastating. So of course, Kick is going to target the closest threat facing. Well, of course, that's poor old Zena. So here we go, he's gonna go ahead and kick her. So our Butcher's gonna need a four plus in order to hit Xena. Hopefully it doesn't do too, oh, you only hit him once. Okay, I think I have a plan for this. We might actually dodge this and see what happens. Let's see where she gets hit with her kick. The kick gets hit in the head. <laughs> she kicked her in the head. So getting kicked in the head actually isn't too big of a deal. She's got that skull cap, so she's only gonna take one armor damage, and that's all that's gonna happen from the kick, except that now she's gonna take knockback five, gain the priority target token and its basic action. So the butcher's gonna knock her back five and she's gonna gain the priority target token. So we're gonna put that under her miniature and she's gonna get knocked back five. Now, once she hits the board edge, that's it. She really can't go anywhere unless she's on the board edge, then she'll get knocked around the board edge. But he's gonna go ahead and do his basic attack against her as well. So his basic action says move and attack target. So his movement is five. So he's gonna move up one and then he's gonna go ahead and do an attack. He has two speed, four plus accuracy, and does one damage. And of course, she'll gain a bleeding token if she actually takes damage from this attack. 
Now, because she has a priority target token, she is going to be the priority target of the next attack. When the monster performs a pick target action, it picks you. Now, that doesn't mean that this is going to trigger the priority target token because it's still part of the original card kick and it's part of the action down here. So let's see what our butcher doesn't do, hopefully, to Xena. Come on, Xena, let's hopefully not get hit. Four plus against Xena. Let's see, oh, two threes, look at that, a three and a three. Oh, that's fantastic. The butcher actually flat out missed her. That's amazing. All right, but he still does have another action. So we're gonna go ahead and discard kick, put our basic action card down, and now we have to remember, she's gonna be the priority target of whatever this is. So let's see what happens to her. Butcher's Roar, all non-deaf survivors. No target menace, intimidate all targets. Roll a d10 for each target. On a result of four plus, target suffers one brain damage per monster level and is knocked down. Oh no, that's terrible. All right, non-deaf survivors, well that's all of them. Now that didn't actually pick a target, so I believe she's still going to keep that priority target token because it's not picking a specific person. So let's go ahead and see how our guys do. So first, we're going to go ahead and see what happens to Xena. Come on, Xena, let's... Uh, oh, she got a 2 plus. She's totally fine. Well, kind of fine, as fine as you can be with a priority target token. So nothing happened to her. We're just going to move right on down the line. We're going to go with Gold Moon next. Let's see if she suffers any brain... Oh, yep, she's suffering brain damage. How about good old Riverwind? Riverwind suffers brain damage. And then we have Karamon. Karamon rolled a 1. He doesn't suffer brain damage. He, Riverwind and Gold Moon both suffer brain damage. So I'm gonna give Gold Moon a token on her for Infectious Lunacy. And I'm also gonna give a token to Riverwind on his Infectious Lunacy. And then both of these characters are going to suffer one brain damage, bringing Gold Moon down to one, and I'm gonna be bringing Riverwind down to four. So he's actually doing a lot better than Gold Moon in this situation. Now the cool thing is, Gold Moon actually has her stalwart. Remember she got this from her Courage event. It said, can't be knocked down by brain trauma or intimidate. And if we look at the Butcher's Roar, it is an intimidate action. So she's not gonna get knocked down. No, of course he's falling on the ground. There he goes, bonk, okay, right there. But that's okay, I might encourage him so he can get up and help us out. So we're going to discard the Butcher's Roar, and we're going to move into our Survivor's turn. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I have a really terrible plan, <laughs> which is usually how they all go. We're going to have Gold Moon move first. She's going to go ahead and spend one of her survival to go ahead and stand up Riverwind here. He's going to, she's going to go down to two, and she's going to stand him up. I believe he's right there. Now, after using that survival action, I'm going to go ahead and use... Xena next, and she's going to move one, two, three, four, five to get into his blind spot. And from there, the first thing she's going to do is she's going to use her bandages. It says remove up to two bleeding tokens from yourself or an adjacent survivor. She's going to do it from herself since she already has two of these evil bleeding tokens. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to surge next and attack him. And if he actually, if I miss or has a reflex that gives me bleeding tokens, it's going to be terrible. So she's going to go ahead and use one of her survival. She's going to go down to two survival and she's going to attack with her bone blade. And hopefully we can take down this butcher. Now our sword goes on a two speed and it has a six plus accuracy so we'll need a five plus because we're in his blind spot come on i got one hit. we got two hits that's awesome well maybe it is because we don't know what they are we might be firing into a super dense location hopefully not the first one is oh the cleaver well we know what to do with this now i'm sorry i got this so wrong the last time it just says it I, doesn't even matter if i attack it i'll go ahead and try to wound it i got a nine so technically, I did wound the cleaver, but it's impervious, so nothing happens. And the second one, oh, I should have actually checked what they were first. I apologize. This could have been the trap. So it says, Furious Gauntlet. If a failure, the attacker locks eyes of the savage horror underneath the butcher's mask. Turn to face the attacker and intimidate. Roll a d10 and a 5, plus the monster cell. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's just go ahead and wound this guy on this one. Now, Xena has plus three strength, so she'll need to roll a six plus. Oh, she got a six exactly. That's awesome. So we have wounded the monster. I don't have to worry about this evil failure reaction. That would have been terrible. Now, the cleaver is going to give her plus one insanity. So we're going to go ahead and bring this up to five. So our guys are absolutely out of control insane. Well, actually, except for, I believe that Gold Moon is not insane. She only has one insanity. All the rest of our survivors are insane. So now we've gone ahead and done that. Let's see what we have to do next. Next thing we have to do is discard our two hit location cards. And since I didn't fail, I actually wounded. We're going to move this over to the wound stack. Sorry, it's off camera. Now, 
that's actually good because now we know what is left in our butcher's pile. He's got a kick, a hack, a hue, a double hack, backhand, and butcher's roar. So none of it's too bad. It's all just, it's all actually pretty bad, but it could be a lot worse. We don't have a lot of advanced cards in there, which is something that's really good. Oh, I'm really excited. We think we must have gotten rid of all the advanced cards over here. And so far, according to this, I don't think there's any way to heal. I haven't seen all the hit location cards yet, so who knows? Maybe one of them will heal him. But we're going to continue on to our survivors. Now, since Xena didn't trigger the Butcher to come down, like he didn't do any type of follow-up attack against her kicking her or something, I'm just going to have to move these people up. One, two, three, four, five. He's got to get up there as fast as he can. He gets to move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's going to move to right there. And I'm going to actually move Gold Moon as well. Now, Gold Moon can move five. One, two, three, four, five. Wait a minute. No, maybe one, two, three, four to right here. I've got a plan. Hopefully, it's going to be really bad, trust me. Now, this time, I'm not going to forget my bone darts. I forgot my bone darts twice now. All right, it says bone darts, range six. It only has one speed, so I, and it needs a seven plus, so it's not the greatest weapon on the planet. It's also frail, so there might be a chance we lose it, but I'm going to go ahead and throw it, one, two, three, four, at the butcher. Now, the other thing I have is Riverwind's got a bunch of founding stones. The problem is it says spend action to sling the stone from anywhere on the board. Archive, archive this card for one automatic hit that inflicts a critical wound. Well, if you can't actually do the critical wound, you don't inflict the damage. And he's only got one critical wound location that I know about, so it's pretty much worthless in throwing these founding stones. So instead, we're going to throw some bone darts. So we need a 7 plus. Is this even going to happen? Probably not, but let's see what happens. Oh, I got a perfect 10! Sadly, I wasn't attacking with my dagger. I would have gotten a uh, survival back. Let's see where we hit our guy. The Furious Greaves Reflex. Full move toward the attacker. Don't move if already adjacent. This might actually help us out, but I'd rather just wound him. Now, the bone darts themselves do have plus three strength, so we only need to roll six plus. Come on, let's get it. Oh, we got a four. That failed. All right, so it didn't even matter if it was a failure or a a wound or a failure, it's still going to happen with this reflex. But we did not hit the Furious Greaves, so let's go see what happens. So according to our Furious Greaves, I have to full move the toward the attacker. Don't move if already adjacent. Well, I'm not adjacent. So he's going to turn and full move toward the attacker, meaning he's going to collide with her. One, two, three up to here, knocking her down. But she still, of course, has a priority target token because she's that awesome. And that's really all we can do. We're going to go ahead and discard our Furious Greaves. Now I'm going to go ahead and discard our Furious Greaves card, and then I'm going to have to shuffle his AI deck up in order to see what he does next, unless I want to surge with Gold Moon and potentially hit him, hopefully hitting that spot that knocks him down. But if I do, it's really about all that's going to happen. He's going to stand up and attack. I don't think it's worth surging right now. I think we're just going to go ahead, mix up his AI deck, and he's going to go ahead and hit us. Let's see what he does to us. Oh, priority target token, though, is still on Xena. So Xena's going to get hit by whatever this is. So the first one is kick. Oh, wow, we've seen this before. <laughs> I don't want him to kick me. It says pick target, closest threat facing, closest threat, no target menace. Now, of course, all this gets superseded by the fact that she has the priority target token. So it says when a monster performs a pick target action, it picks you. So it's going to pick Xena, which is terrible because it's going to kick her all the way across the board. Unless, of course, he misses. That might be kind of good. All right, let's go see what happens. So if you look at kick, it's pick target is actually going to priority target. So he's going to turn around and pick that target. All right, and then he's going to move and attack target. Now, hmm. I can't turn him. I could surge right now in between his pick target step and his actually move and attack step. But actually, I think I'm going to let this go. I'm going to go ahead and allow him to do his move and attack target. A test, speed 2, 4 accuracy, 1 damage. After damage, target suffers knockback 5 and gains a priority target token. Well, she's already got it, so it's not going to matter. So I think I'm going to let him kick her. So the kick needs a 4 plus to hit her. And oh my gosh, he hit her twice. All right, so let's see where he hit her. And oh, come on, Xena, not too bad. The hands and the foot. All right, let's go take care of that. So Xena's going to get hit in the foot, and she's also hit in the arms, which means she's going to be taking a heavy wound there. Now, if she takes any more damage in the hands, she's going to have to go ahead and take a roll on the severe injury table, which is going to be absolutely terrible. So now that that's done, he's going to go ahead and knock her back. So again, she's being knocked back five, one, two, three. She's gonna stop when she hits the edge of the board and he's gonna go ahead and chase after her with his basic action card. Butcher pursues the target, perform basic action. So of course his basic action is just the move forward. Need a four plus one damage, two speed. One, two, three, he's gonna run up here and he's gonna go ahead and hit her. So let's see what happens to her now. Well, the Butcher's gonna go in with a four plus. Come on, hopefully he misses. Oh, he missed once. Okay, this might actually work really well because I could probably dodge that attack right there. 
Now, I don't really want to dodge this attack, even though I want to, because I don't really want to get hit. But it says here, after the target suffers knockback 5, it's going to gain the priority target token. So the priority target token says, when a monster performs a pick target action, it picks you. So it's picked me, and it says, when you're picked as a target, discard this token. So I discard the token when we did the pick target action. Then, of course, it's going to go ahead and give me back the priority target token after it makes this attack. So since I'm going to be gaining the priority target token back, I might as well go ahead and just take this attack. Hopefully it didn't hit me in the arms. Oh, it got me in the legs. Well, that's just about as bad. So we're going to have to go ahead and check off the light wound box for Xena in the legs. So we're going to go ahead and discard kick. I'm guessing you all noticed that I didn't shuffle my hit location deck because I was supposed to do that due to his fast target ability. So we're going to shuffle this hit location deck up a little bit. There we go. Back to there. Now he is going to do his second attack thanks to his berserk card. Berserker, sorry. Okay, let's see what it is. Hopefully it's not too bad. Hugh. Oh, this is perfect. This is why I was saving the dodge. <laughs> Shoot closest threat facing all this targeting stuff doesn't matter because she is the priority target still. So he's going to move and attack the target. Speed one, three accuracy. After damage, bleed one. Target gains one bleeding token and bash. Target is knocked down. She's already knocked down. I don't like the three damage. That's what I'm really worried about. So we're going to go ahead and roll to see what he does there. So he needs a three plus to hit Xena. And he, of course, hit Xena. And that's just fine. We're going to use a survival to dodge that. So Xena's going to go down to one dodge. I don't even care where the thing hit me, because wherever it hits me, it's going to be bad news to her. It's going to be rolling on some kind of table. And yes, you can dodge while you're laying on the ground. That's one of the survival actions you can use while you're on the ground. So the first thing we're going to do is she's going to lose the priority target token, and now it's our turn. And look where Goldmoon is. Goldmoon is in the perfect position to use her white lion coat. This actually worked out better than I thought. So we're going to spend our movement and our action to move three spaces in a straight line. Then if you move three spaces, activate a melee weapon with plus one strength. That's going to be fantastic. She's going to go one, two, three, right into his blind spot and attack with her bone dagger, which hopefully she might be able to get a survival back with if she can roll a perfect hit. Gains plus one survival. But right now we get to roll three dice. I need a six plus because I'm in his blind spot. But before we do the pounce, there is, I do actually want to move him first. One, two, three. He'll go right about there. I think that's gonna be fine. I want him to use his cat eye circlet to look at the three hit location cards. If it's a trap, we gotta get rid of it. So we've got the furious, oh, the furious gut again. Oh, I hope we wound that location. We're putting that right on top. Thick cape, the butcher's cape is decorated with the was that shriveled screaming faces of its victims wow reflex the attack roll the d10 is greater than its courage it suffers brain damage equal to monster level we'll put that on the bottom oh this is terrible furious crown the butcher lashes out wildly cleaning clearing a path for itself all survivals adjacent to the butcher suffer bash full move toward the furthest survivor oh wow all right i think we're gonna put him in this order i think that's gonna be my best plan well actually it wouldn't be too bad to have the reef. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go in this direction. All right, we want to wound this location, and life is gonna be absolutely glorious. So Gold Moon needs a six plus to hit in that blind spot. Oh, she got a ton of. Oh, look at this, a perfect hit. That means she's gonna gain back one survival, and she also got a six, which means she hit as well. So of course that furious gut is coming up, but so is the furious crown. So we're gonna make sure to try to wound our furious gut first. So we get plus one, two, three to this roll. One for our token, one for the knife or dagger, and then also one for being able to pounce. So we need a six plus, come on. Oh, we got the nine, we did it. <laughs> we wounded him and we butcher is knocked down. All survivors gain plus one courage. If the monster is knocked down, all reactions are canceled and all hit rolls succeed on a three plus. We've got one more wounding location here and the reflex isn't gonna happen. I did another six plus. Oh, we got a critical hit, but it doesn't matter. There's no critical on it. But I'm just excited because we actually wounded him twice and he's knocked down. So I'm gonna discard our two cards and we're gonna go ahead and put two cards over here. Wow, look at my hands are just shaking because I'm so excited. All right, we're gonna go knock down the butcher and then we're gonna go hit him real good. All right, Butcher, down you go. And now I think it's going to be Riverwind's turn. He's going to use one of his survival, and he's going to go ahead and encourage Xena to stand up. I'm going to use one of his survival actions. And he's going to encourage her to stand up, and he's, she's going to go ahead and wallop him with that bone so blade that she's got. So Xena gets to attack twice. She only needs a three plus to hit, and she hit twice. Now, of course, we have to remember there's still a trap in this deck somewhere. So let's see what we get. We got 
the Furious Breastplate. Now this still gives plus two toughness to the wound location. This has nothing to do with any type of reactions or anything. And we got the Thick Cape. Butcher's cape is decorated the shriveled, screaming faces of its soul. We've already seen this one, but oh yeah, we, <laughs> because we put it on, on the bottom of the three cards. All right, we're going to go ahead and wound both these locations. The first one we're going to go for is this breastplate. We're going to cause the lantern explosion. Hopefully not. Okay, we did not, but we got a five, and he's got a toughness of nine. Now, the thing is, I've got my bone blade, which gives me plus two, and she has plus one innate strength, so that's only an eight. We still didn't even wound him, even though he's on the ground. So we're going to go ahead and try to hit the thick cape. Hopefully we can wound that. Oh, we didn't wound that either. Oh, that's too bad for Gold Moon. Or I mean Xena, not Gold Moon. Gold Moon did awesome. So we're going to discard our two hit location cards, and now we have to decide. I've got two people that both have Surge. Right now they can Surge. If he Surges, the only thing he can really do is use his Cat Eye Circlet again. And like I said before, she has three attacks. We're going to know what all three of the attacks are. And her Bone Blade, I'm not too worried about it. Well, I am worried about it. I hate to lose it. I'm going to have our Bone Blade Surge, and that's going to be Xena. So Xena's running out of survival, but that's okay. She is now completely out. She has no survival. She can't dodge anything anymore. I don't know if that's going to be a good idea, but we're going to go ahead and do it. The other thing I forgot to do, which I'm sure everybody's telling me right now, is I'm supposed to gain our Courage plus one to all our survivors. And look, Xena actually goes up one. Now, of course, Gold Moon gets a Courage as well, but she's already gained her Bold Story event. And Karamon is also going to gain his bold story event. So we've got to do all these story events too before we even do the surges. I actually should have done them before I actually did the attack with the bone blade. But that's okay. It's my fault for not actually doing it. Now I've already read everything that goes along with this bold story event. The only thing I have to do is I have to give both of these survivors their stalwart. Because they got this during the actual showdown phase. Now that they have that, we have to roll on the table. I'm going to have Karamon go ahead and roll first, and he got a four. And then we're going to go ahead and have Xena roll second. She got a, oh, she got a Lantern 10. Wow, that's awesome. So Karamon is going to gain plus three survival and plus three insanity. That's actually really good because he only had two, and we can go up to our max, which is four. I can't actually get to five. I can only get to four because that's our max. Now, of course, he also gets three insanity, which means he goes to a six, which means he's super insane. Now, the awesome thing is, look. I get plus one permanent speed for Xena. So Xena's going to go ahead and take plus one permanent speed. That is probably one of the greatest things you can get in this game because that means you get to attack more often. Now, like I said before, I wish I would have done the story event first because she could have had one more attack with that sword when we went in to actually attack. But now that we're going to surge, we could probably do it. And so now we are going to surge. We've already taken the survival. We're going to go ahead and surge against that butcher with the bone blade. So normally our Bone Blade has a two speed, but now she has that plus one permanent speed. So she gets to roll three dice and she needs a three plus. Come on, you. Oh, wow, she missed. Wow, she almost missed all of them, but she got two. That's pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and draw our next two hit location cards, and they are the Furious Gauntlets and the Cleaver. All right, well, the Cleaver doesn't matter. She's going to gain plus one insanity, but I do get to try to wound this location. Now she gets plus three strength against this. Come on, hopefully she gets, oh, she got a three. She didn't get it. All right, that's okay. So Xena's going to go ahead and gain that plus one in Sandy. So she's at six right now. Wow. Now it's going to be Gold Moon's turn. She's going to surge. She hasn't surged yet. And she's had the two survival. She's going to go down to one. Remember, she got the one survival from getting a perfect hit with that dagger. So she's going to go down to one survival and she's going to go ahead and try to hit him with three. So Gold Moon attacks with three dice. She needs a three plus. Oh, she missed once. Wow, I can't believe my guys are missing. All right, I get to try to hit two different locations. Now, like I said, that trap's still in here. There's the Furious Greaves and the Voracious Vambrace. What is this? I don't think we've seen this before. Vambraces. Billy Butcher lashes out and attacks. Face striking the backhand. Wow, what is this? The Butcher lashes out at the attacker's face, striking with the back of his hand. Form basic attack. Target the attacker. This attack gains before damage. Headhunter? This attack always hits the head location. Oh, yuck. I'm glad I don't have to worry about those. We're going to go ahead and roll both our dice. Now, there is no criticals or anything, so we're just going to roll them both together. I get plus two to this. So let's hopefully get at least one of them. Oh, no, I didn't wound him at all. That's an eight, and that's a, a seven. That's yucky. All right, so both those surgeons are a bunch of barf. We didn't hit him at all. All right, so he's still got, what, four AI cards, and it's his turn. So, of course, his fast target is going to make me even mix up the hit location deck. He's going to stand up, and he's probably, and he's still facing Xena, who now doesn't have any survival. This seems really bad. The first card that he draws is Butcher's Roar. All nine non-death survivors intimidate. 
will D10 for each target. On a result of four plus, the target suffers one brain damage per monster level and is knocked down. All right, let's go do that. All right, so as per expected, he's really upset. He stood up and roared right at her. She's going to take the first roar. Let's see how she does. She got a six plus. She's going to be knocked down and she's going to take a brain damage. Next, we have Gold Moon. Gold Moon is going to take a brain damage. And next, we've got Riverwind. Riverwind is going to take a brain damage and get knocked down. Now, of course, she doesn't get knocked down because of her stalwart. Oh, I think she's got stalwart still, too. All oh, these guys have stalwart now. I forgot about it. Well, except for Riverwind. Riverwind can face plant. That's fine. And of course, we've got Caramon way back there. He rolled a 7 plus or 4 plus. So all of our guys are going to suffer one brain damage. That's going to be really bad. Now, I've gone ahead and already erased one insanity from each of our characters and we have to watch out gold moon is at zero right now now of course i also have to pass out our infectious lunacy tokens so we're going to give one to each color the other characters are going to gain their blue green and red one respectively now everybody seems to be doing okay except of course gold moon does have two infectious lunacy tokens the same as our wonderful river wind here and since that was an intimidate attack we're not going to be knocked down. Well, like I said, Riverwind is, but the rest of our characters all have that stalwart because of our courage that we all have. So that attack is done. Let's see what the last one he has in his AI deck is. It's hack. All right, so it's going to be two speed, four accuracy, one damage, and plus one bleeding token after damage. And this is going to be the closest threat facing, which is going to be Xena. Now this could be absolutely terrible. I don't have any way to dodge this because I've used all of my insanity already, or sorry, not insanity, all of my survival. So she got hit twice. If she gets hit in the legs, this could be game over for our wonderful survivor. Hopefully not in the legs. Oh, why do these things keep hitting me? Oh no, wait, it's the, it's the hands I have to worry about. Oh, thank goodness. You can hit me in the legs. I guess that's probably okay. All right, actually, it's not too bad. She got hit in the legs, which is going to be a heavy wound, and she's going to get hit in the body for one. All right, and she does suffer one bleeding token. So we're going to go ahead and give that to her as well. Now, she's that's okay. She's got plenty more that she can take. She can take four more of them. Thank goodness for her bandages. She would have had three otherwise. So our characters are all doing okay. Here's our plan. I'm going to have Caramon go ahead and use one of survival. He's got four. He got all that back after he was able to get that bold story event. Now he rolls on a six plus. He gets to keep his survival. Let's see how he does. Oh, he gets to keep his survival. All right. I don't even have to erase his survival. I'm just going to put it back to four. I shouldn't have erased in the first place. So Caramon still sits at our max for survival. And now we're going to have him encourage him with his survival action as his arm falls off, but that's okay because just like all the rest of them, they're all magnetized. They all just kind of hang out there. All right. Put him back up. Oh, there we go. All right. He's still got his arm. Ah. He's one of the few survivors that actually have arms. <laughs> There's two back there in our civilization that don't. So now that he's up, I think he could use that cat eye circle at this point to go ahead and take a look at the top three AI cards just because I don't know what they're going to be. Well, I grabbed four. That's illegal. I'm trying to cheat. All right, let's see what our three are. We've got the Furious Breastplate. Oh, I really hope that one's... Oh, no. There's the trap. Okay, this changes the way a lot of this is going to play out. Oh, I don't like this at all. Let's see what the reflex is on this. After roll a d10, attacker rolls a d10, and the result is greater than your their courage. They suffer brain damage equal to the monster's level. Okay, that's also... These are absolutely terrible ones to have up in front. Oh, no. What are we going to do? I think what we're going to do is we're going to... Okay, what is the trap? Everybody is doomed. One bleeding token, and he performs a basic attack targeting the attacker. All right, so I can't have it be her because she's really hurting. And Gold Moon doesn't have a lot of... All right, arms are okay. I, she could trigger the trap. He doesn't have any armor. I don't want him triggering the trap. I'd really like to have Caramon trigger the trap, but he's way down here and he can't get to it. All right, with my secret knowledge, I've got a plan. <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous, but I'm going to put the trap on top. I have a plan. I am going to use Xena first. She's going to go one, two, three, four, five. And she's going to hang out right here. Next, I'm going to have Gold Moon move one, two, three, four to right here. Yes, this is going to be my plan. So when he, now I'm going to have him actually surge to use his move and attack because he hasn't used any movement yet. So he can, he can use his cumbersome bow because it needs a movement and an actual attack action. If he can fire at him, trigger his reaction. Actually, I might have her do it. Oh, wait, I got a better plan. Oh, super plan. Ready for my super plan? One, two, three, four, five again right here. She's going to move one, two, three. I think she's going to move 
right here. And he's going to go one, two, three, four, down to here to attack her. Yeah, that'll be awesome. All right, that's going to be my plan. She's going to throw her bone darts, one, two, three, four, five, and hopefully I hit him. If I don't hit him, then I am kind of wasting this, but that'll be okay. No, oh, I can't even attack her. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's about the best I can do. All right, that's it. We're going to do it this way. She's going to throw her bone darts, one, two, three, four, five. She's going to stay right here, maybe surge to make an attack against him at some point. Actually, she's gotta, she won't be able to make an attack from there. I'm sorry, I'm making a lot of weird moves here. All right, we're gonna move her here and then she's gonna go ahead and throw her bone darts. That's gonna be the plan. That's where we stand. Let's throw the darts at him because if that triggers his trap, he's gonna move down here and attack her, meaning she'll be able to get behind him. And then I can even have him move up and actually go after him. All right, that's the plan. Oh my gosh, that took a lot. I am so sorry. <laughs> Let's see if I can even hit with the bone darts. If I don't, that was all for naught. This is just a mute point. Ah, oh, so that long, huge conversation comes down to one die roll. This could be nothing for nothing here. Oh, we got a six we even missed, so it didn't even matter. All right, so the only person we have left is him. One, two, three, four, five, just going to run up. That's going to be the deal here. I don't think there's anything else I can really do. All right, so this is the good news. At the start of my location or turn, I have to shuffle the hit location deck. So we're going to give this a big old truffle shuffle here and get <laughs> hopefully get that trap off the top. We're going to put it right there. Now I have to go ahead and shuffle this up as well because we have to go ahead and make an attack with the Butcher. So the Butcher is going to take the top AI card, and then we're going to see what happens. And he gets to do it again because that's how wonderful the Butcher is. Hugh, closest target facing, closest threat. All right, so closest threat facing and just the closest threat. So all of our characters are threats because none of them are knocked down. And the closest threat facing, we have anybody facing, so he's just going to turn around and attack somebody. So our hue card is going to tell us to attack the closest threat facing. There's nobody in front of him. So now it's just going to attack the closest threat. So the closest threat, if we turn our monster and attack, it's going to be 1-2 to get to her, 1-2 to get to her, 1-2 to get to them. So I could attack anybody I wanted to except for him. I think we're going to go ahead and attack Karamon. I know he's got three bleeding tokens, but he also has four survival, so he'll be able to dodge this hue attack. It's just I'm afraid the other attack might actually do two bleeding tokens, and that'd be terrible. Oh, no, I don't know what to do. Actually, I think we're going to attack Goldmoon. I know she doesn't have a lot of armor all over her place, but she only has one survival, though. She'd have to use it to dodge, and that's going to be it. And Xena has no survival yet. Oh, I think we have to risk it. We're going to go ahead and have him attack Karamon. So our Butcher gets to roll one die and he needs a three plus, but I get plus one evasion. So he needs a four plus. Oh, we missed. That's awesome. I don't even have to worry about dodging it. So since he missed with the hue attack, we're going to move it over to the discard pile. And we're going to go with our second attack. And this one's going to be Butcher's Roar again. Oh, no, this is going to be pretty bad. I think a lot of our guys are about to gain as many lunacy tokens as they're allowed to have. All right, we're going to have to roll on the four plus. Our target suffers a brain damage per monster level and is knocked down. So we're just going to start here. Goldmoon's going to go first. She needs, if she gets a four plus, oh, she doesn't get knocked down or take any brain damage. Good old Riverwind. Riverwind doesn't take it either. All right, Caramon. How you doing, man? Oh, no, you took a brain damage. <laughs> and then last but not least, we've got Xena here. Xena is not going to take one. Oh, so the only person that's going to gain one is Caramon. And Caramon only has one lunacy token so far. So he's going to gain the lunacy token. And he's also stalwart. So he's not going to be knocked down. But he does lose one insanity. So he goes down to four brain damage. Oh, man. Or sorry, four insanity. He does take a brain damage. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, our characters are sweet. All right, this is where we need to, okay, right now we need to heal this guy badly. So no matter what anybody does first, Xena's gonna move one, two, over to there, using her bandages to heal two bleeding tokens off of Karamon. Remove up to two bleeding tokens from yourself or an adjacent survivor. So he's adjacent to Karamon, Karamon's gonna lose two bleeding tokens. Oh, I think that's gonna be a lifesaver for him. That's been her move and her action. So now we have to go into the rest of our group. I think the first person to go is going to be Goldmoon. One, two, three. She's going to move back here, and she's going to attack with those daggers. Hmm. But do I want to use his cat eye circle at first? No, we really need to just womp on him as fast as we can. I'm probably going to regret this, but I'm just going to go ahead and roll. We need, what, six plus? Wow, three misses. She missed. Well, she went ahead and missed, and with all my wonderful tactics, because I'm the greatest tactician on the planet, I probably should have moved her one more square over, because now he can't get the blind spot. Oh, that was silly of me. All right, I think we're going to go next with Karamon here. I think he's just going to go ahead and whack him right where he's standing with his bone axe. 
So Caramon gets two attacks with his bone axe. Let's see how he does. He got a nine and a six. I believe that's going to hit with both. Let's check to see what the bone axe does. I haven't used it in a while because he's been out of the fight. I need a six plus. So he does hit with two hits. Hopefully he doesn't hit the super dense location or hopefully he doesn't trigger the trap. He got the Furious Vambris. And the, oh, he did get the super dense location. Oh, that's terrible. All right. Well, let's see. Maybe I can actually have this happen first. And then I won't have to worry about the super dense location, just like we did when they got the trap. All right. Let's go ahead and try to wound our Furious. What is this? The Furious Vambraces first. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, I apologize. He needs to get, oh, what does he need? A four, five, six, seven. That's not enough. Oh, darn, you failed. You get to keep your axe. <laughs> so I guess that's a good thing. The butcher lashes out at the attacker's face, striking with a back hand of his hand. Perform basic action. Target the attacker. This attacker gains before damage headhunter. This attack always hits the head location. All right, that's not the end of the world. We're going to go ahead and use his basic attack, which is going to be that two plus or two speed with a five plus because I have plus one evasion. So let's see how our butcher does. He hit once. Okay, that's enough to hit him once. Now I could if I wanted to dodge this, but if I dodge it, oh, I can't dodge it because this is the middle of his action. I cannot dodge against these attacks here, but I could if I want to jump in the middle of this. Well, it's too late now. I've already rolled the dice. Never mind. All right, head under. This attack always hits the head location, so I'm going to take one damage to the head and a bleeding token. So he's going to go ahead and take one damage to the head. And I don't know why I'm so excited about this at all. Because I, for some reason I thought that this card somewhere on here said I'm going to be knocked down. But I'm not. This, That's it. That's just what this card does. He also gains a bleeding token, which is awesome. And now I actually do have to hit the super dense location. So I'm not too excited about that. But that's what's going to happen. So now that we've finished with the Furious Vambraces, failure that doesn't knock me down. I was really hoping it would have. Oh, well, too bad. We're going to go ahead. Now we have to hit our super dense location. So we're going to go ahead and see what happens. Oh, I got a lantern 10. That's awesome. I, <laughs> I can't believe it. So we're going to go ahead and discard our two hit locations. And sadly, we're going to lose our bone axe. It says savage once per attack. If you critically wound. Now we did roll a critical wound on the lantern table, but sadly, our location doesn't have a critical effect. So I don't believe I get to trigger my savage attack from my bone axe. Instead, my bone axe just hits it, blows up, and is gone. And we do get to do one damage to him. That's half the battle. So we're going to lose our, we have to archive this bone axe. Wow, that's really, really sad. So now he's stuck with fist and tooth, and that's really, oh, he's got a harp. <laughs> that harp really doesn't help against this guy. We're going to go on to our next combatant. So now we have kind of a serious problem. She's gone. And she doesn't have any survival, so she can't surge. She has one, so she could surge. He has a ton of survival. He's probably going to surge. But he's stuck with just his fist and tooth now. He could also surge, but all he'd be surging with is his cat and gut bow here, which I guess isn't too bad. I could fire with that. I think I'm going to do that. We're going to surge with Riverwind. Riverwind is down to one survival, meaning he doesn't have many left either. But he's going to use his one, one of his survival here to go ahead and fire his cat gut bow. His cat gut bow, of course, isn't too bad. It's a two plus. It needs a seven plus, or two speed, seven plus, and has three uh, strength. So let's see how he can do. So I get to roll two dice for Riverwind. Come on, it's the first time you've attacked. Oh, you got one hit. That's not too bad. Let's see where you actually hit our wonderful Butcher. You hit him oh, right in the cleaver. That's fantastic end of the game, or end of your attack. Fantastic. Well, you get plus one to Sandy. Go, Riverwind. Good job, Riverwind. Right off his cleaver. <laughs> oh, that was a barf-tacular maneuver. Way to go. All right, no big deal. We go ahead into, maybe I'm going to have Goldmoon surge as well. From the blind spot, Gold Moon is going to surge. And the reason I'm going to do it is because we know in his deck, he has only three cards left. And one of them is the Butcher's Roar. And if we actually get all those Lunacy tokens, which are about to happen, I could potentially become Frenzy. And I'm probably not going to be able to use my survival much after this anyway. So I'm going to have her surge into the blind spot of the Butcher. So I get to roll three dice with my daggers. Come on, let's get a hit. Oh, we got a perfect hit. That means she gets a survival back. Oh, that's awesome. So she doesn't actually have to spend her survival to do this. So she still has one survival left. That's awesome. Now we do have to draw two hit location cards to see if we hit. All right, let's see if something really bad happens. Hopefully not. Oh, there's the trap. Darn it. You know, I was kind of thinking I might have been doing too much luck here. All right. All survivors in the zone of, of malice gain one bleeding token and suffer knockback five. Perform basic action. Target the attacker. This is terrible. So our butcher explodes in a burst of ferocity. 
all survivors gain one bleeding token to knock back five. So I've got four bleeding tokens here. I'm just going to pass them out to all our survivors. That's awesome. These guys are all going to knock back five. One, two, three, four, five off camera because it's so far. One, two, three, four, five. She's going to go one, two, and that's as far as she can go before she hits the board edge. Now, him, I'm not sure about. Is it this way, this way, or my choice? I'm going to go with my choice. One, two, three, four, five. If it's not, please let me know in the comments below. But if from where I am right here, I obviously I don't think you can go diagonal. If you can go diagonal, please let me know. But I believe everything was always orthogonally. All right. Now it's going to be a basic attack targeting the attacker. He's going to move up here. It's going to be pure, pure terror. All right. Two speed, four plus, and one, and she's gonna gain a bleeding token after this attack. So our butcher rolls two dice, and he doesn't need much to hit. A four and a three. I think the three missed. It did. He needed a four plus to hit. So we only got hit once. That's not too bad. Where did we get hit by the butcher? The butcher hit us right in the waist. Okay, that's not too bad. So Gold Moon gets hit right in the waist. She doesn't have any armor there anymore. So I can't get hit in the arms or the waist, or things are gonna start going real bad. So I'm going to have to go ahead and shuffle up our hit location deck because of the trap. Also, it's the end of our survivor's turn, and we have to do it anyway because of his fast target action or trait that he has. So our hit location cards are ready to go, and now it's our wonderful butcher's turn. All right, let's see what he's got left to do. Oh, he's got kick. This is terrible. All right, knock back. Oh, and I'm going to gain the priority target token. Oh, no, I don't know if I'm <laughs> I might not ever get this offer because there's so few cards left, and she might just be the priority target for the rest of the game. Oh, that's going to be horrible. All right, two... Attack four plus accuracy after damaged. Target suffers knockback five and gains the priority target token. So he might not actually damage me. We'll see. All right. We need to have him miss is what we need. So we have two dice from our butcher. Hopefully he misses with both of them. Oh, he did miss with both of them. Look at he got a one and a three. Oh, that's awesome. He needed a four plus. So this actually missed after this damage. Target suffers knockback five and gains the priority target token. Now, of course, there's an there's a place where I can do a survival action if I want to. I could attempt to uh, surge if I want, but I don't think it's really going to help me. So instead, we do have to do this basic action, though, targeting him. So two speed, four plus. Let's see how that goes. All right, she needs a four plus. Oh, okay, this time she got hit once. A once is not bad. I'll take it. But I do get a bleeding token, which is terrible. Now I got hit in the hands. Oh, the hands are awful. Okay, here we go. All right, so if we're getting hit in the arm, she's going to take a light wound to the arms, and she's going to gain another bleeding token. And since that kick didn't actually do any damage, it says right here, after damage. Well, he didn't do any damage, so I don't get suffered knockback five, and I don't gain a priority target token. So now that kick is done, we're going to discard kick into the AI deck. Now we have to mix up the AI deck again, which is going to be absolutely terrible. I don't know where anything is. And oh, I hope I don't get that kick again. That'd be horrible. All right, we're going to mix that all up. We're going to put it down, and we're going to draw a card. And we got Hugh. Oh, good. I haven't used my survival yet either. Closest threat facing. Closest threat. That's her. Speed. Okay, so she's going to go ahead and get hit by one speed, three accuracy attack. So he has a one die, three speed attack. And he hits. Okay. It's going to hit me where? I'm sure wherever it is, I'm in the body. I don't think I want to hit in the body. I only have one survival left, but I believe I have to dodge this three. Now, the three damage attack would only bring me down to a light wound, which means I'd still be standing, And I, but I would have to take a bleeding token, I believe. Let's see what else this thing does. This thing also bleed one, target gains one bleeding token, and bash. Target is knocked down. I'm going to get knocked down anyway. Well, maybe it's not too bad. Huh, this, oh, it's so tough to think about this. I think we're just going to dodge it. I don't like the three damage, I don't like the bleeding, and I don't like the knockdown. Now, I don't have any other way of dodging anything else, or surging for that matter. So here's where all our survivors sit. We need to get this butcher. Now, the only thing I can really do is move Gold Moon. She's going to go one, two, three, four, five back here, use her daggers to try to maybe hit him, and if same thing goes bad where he bashes her back this way, then our other survivors can get up there. Otherwise, she's going to get absolutely wrecked by all those AI cards that are about to happen. All right, let's see. She has about the only one that can do anything. If she hits and nothing happens or she misses, I'm just going to move up. That's the only thing I can do. So I guess we're going to have to cheer on that Bone Dagger. Come on, Bone Dagger, you need a six plus. Come on, something. Oh, I got one. Maybe it's going to be enough to knock this guy down. All right, if we draw the hit location card, we get Furious Gauntlet. Failure. The attacker looks, eyes look with savage horror underneath the butcher's mask. Turn to face the attacker, intimidate. Roll a d10 and result of five plus the attacker suffers one brain damage per monster level. Well, I'm, okay, well, that's going to be terrible. All right, we don't want that to happen. We're just going to wound him. Let's just wound him. That'd be the best bet here. 
A seven plus two is nine. That's enough to wound him. All right, so we have at least wounded him. So we're going to go ahead and remove an AI card, discard our Furious Gauntlet. Now the problem is we only have two AI cards and we know one of them is this Hue card. I don't have any way to get rid of it right now. So the only thing I can do is move our characters up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, right about there, I guess. Oh wait, he's right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because he has six speed. I forgot about that. All right, now he's just going to come to about here. She's going to move up one, two, three, four to about there. And I have a feeling this guy's going to come plowing straight down to attack these guys is my guess. All right, let's see what our wonderful butcher does. So according to what things we have out here, this is either kick or furious roar. <laughs> I don't know which one it is and neither one is going to be good. It's butcher's or sorry, butcher's roar. All non-death survivors intimidate all targets. Roll d6 and a result of 4 plus, the target suffers 1 brain damage per monster level and is knocked down. Alright, so we're going to have to go ahead and deal with that. Alright, so this again could be where we see a bunch of frenzying characters. Her is first, she got a 9. She takes 1 brain damage. How about him? Oh, he definitely takes brain damage. How about Karamon? Karamon takes a brain damage. And last but not least, we have Xena. Xena, oh, they all take brain damage. This is terrible. So almost everybody we have has now in, got this frenzy here. It says, when you suffer brain damage, gain lunacy tokens equal to the damage suffered. When you have three lunacy tokens, remove them all and suffer the frenzy brain trauma. Now, Xena's the only one that still only has two. So she's not going to be frenzied, but the rest of us are. So here's frenzy. Gain D5 insanity, plus one speed token, and plus one strength token. Ignore slow on melee weapons. You may not spend survival. You may not use fighting arts. You may not use weapon specializations or weapon masteries. Can be gained multiple times last until the end of the showdown. So I'm going to go ahead and roll D5 insanity for everybody and give them their tokens. So the first thing we have to do is actually take the brain damage. So we're just going to go ahead and mark that. Now we're going to take our frenzy. I'm going to go ahead and roll this and just divide it by two. So we got nine divided by two is 4.5. So that's five. We're going to gain five brain damage there or five insanity. I'm sorry. And she's going to gain a plus one strength token. So she now has two plus one strength tokens, which is pretty awesome. And she also gets a plus one speed token. Next we have Karamon, he is going to gain his third lunacy token and he's going to go ahead and suffer a brain damage. So he's going to go down to three and now we're going to go ahead and roll and divide this number by two. So we got eight divided by two is four. So he has three plus four is seven insanity and he's also going to gain a plus one speed and plus one strength token. Now Xena is just going to gain the lunacy token. She actually only had one so she's down on up to two. So we're going to go on to Riverwind. So Riverwind is going to go down to three brain damage, and then we're going to go ahead and roll our die. He got an eight, so four plus three is seven. He's up to seven insanity, and he's going to go ahead and remove his lunacy tokens because he does gain his third one. Now he also gets to gain his plus one strength and his plus one speed token. That's awesome. So now I have to go ahead and discard the Butcher's Roar. Now I have to shuffle these. How <laughs> are we going to do one again? Well, hopefully if we get the Butcher's Roar again, which is kind of funny, I wouldn't even know. I guess all I'm going to do is suffer some brain damage. We got Hugh, so pick target, closest threat facing. So he's going to have to turn around. Oh, there's nobody facing, so he's just going to go to closest threat. So let's go take care of that. So he's going to go ahead and go towards the closest threat. Now I have to knock Riverwind down. Riverwind's not bold yet, sorry buddy. So he's going to turn around, and since this person's in the blind spot, I don't believe she gets targeted. It's just closest threat. So he's going to go one, two, three, knocking her down, which is going to be terrible because I don't have any way of getting her up. And he's going to attack Karamon. I can choose which one. Goldmoon has almost no, or sorry, Xena has almost no armor left. So I'm just going to have him attack Karamon. So I'm going to have to roll this die now. He needs a four plus because I get plus one evasion. Now the only sad thing is I don't have any way of dodging this anymore because I don't have any way of using survival. Oh no, he did hit me. All right, this could be really, really bad. We're going to roll one die and see where it hits. It's in the head. Oh, that's horrible. So he's going to take three to the head. So he's going to one, two, and then he's going to get hit with a heavy hit to the head. Oh, that's terrible. And he gains a bleeding token. Oh, we're getting dangerously close. We need to find a way to heal this guy. He's up to four. If he takes one more, he's dead. And then he gets knocked down, not only because of his head, but also because the card tells me. Now that looks like a butcher fight. All <laughs> you guys are on the ground and you got one person just standing hoping for the best. Now, one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to mix up his hit location cards when he got that fat, when he went to his turn. So hopefully something bad does not go on top. And we're going to go on to Xena. She's going to go one, two, three, four, five, right into the blind spot. She's going to hopefully hit him and hopefully we can take this guy out. 
So I'm kind of putting all my eggs in one basket. I'm attacking with my bone blade. I need a five plus. Now I don't have any survival. Otherwise I'd use bandages on Caramon and just go into the next round. But that Q card in there is just devastating. I'm gonna get that out of here. I'm gonna have to roll and hopefully get some really good rolls into five plus. I hit her with, I have once. <laughs> oh no, that's terrible. All right, so this isn't gonna be good at all. All right, so what do we get? Furious Grease, move toward the attacker. Okay, well, that's, that's, well, she's gonna be, well, whatever. All right, we need to get something good here. Well, we, okay, we wounded him. That's half the battle. So we're gonna discard our Furious Grease, and we're gonna remove one card from the eye deck, and I know what this is. This is that Roar card, meaning the only card he has left is this devastating Q card. Oh, man. Three damage. Oh, it's gonna be terrible. All right, that's the end of her turn. She can't surge. All my guys are knocked down. This is just terrible. So the only card he has left is Hugh, and I think we're about to see our first dead survivor. So here's the deal. Closest threat facing. Well, he's not a threat. He's not a threat because they're both knocked down. Now, normally he would always be a threat unless he's knocked down. That's one of his disorders. Now, the next one is closest threat. Now, normally you don't target people in the blind spot, but that's only when it talks about field of view. And I may have played this card wrong a couple times already. I apologize for that. It's not in view. There's no in view here. And I was getting that mixed up. It's closest threat. So the closest threat is her. The blind spot is not going to save her. I think I'd saved her before. I think I plowed straight through her on her way to Caramon just recently. And I apologize for that. I'll, I won't know until later. Now, that means she's going to get attacked once with a three accuracy for three damage, and this is just going to be just straight up sadness all over the place. All right, let's see if she's even able to survive this Hugh attack. Well, apparently he's not. He lost his arm. <laughs> Ooh, maybe that's something that's foreshadowing in the future. All right, he's still down right there. So let's go see what our butcher does to Goldmoon. Oh, no, that's not Goldmoon. Goldmoon's here. To Xena. So the only thing I think that can really save Xena is hopefully he gets less than a three. No, oh, we got a nine. <laughs> He's going to absolutely smash her. Let's see where he smashed her. Oh, right in the hands. Oh, that's going to be terrible. So Xena's going to take one bleeding token and three damage to the hands, which is, well, she's already at the heavy wound location here. So she's just going to flat out take a roll on the severe injury table. So let's go ahead and roll on our severe injury table for our hands. What do we get? Oh, no. <laughs> We got a one, and it says, die of shock. Your vision fades along with the sight of your mangled, armless torso. So our butcher has claimed its first victim. It is Xena. Sorry, Xena, you lasted a long time. So Xena is going to be placed right here on the dreaded trophies card. And he now says, all attack profiles gain after damage bleed one. So now we're going to discard Hugh, and then we're going to have to draw another card. I have to shuffle the discard pile, and it's Hugh again. And now there are no threats this time, so I'm just going to menace whoever is in front of me. Also, I forgot to go ahead and shuffle his hit location deck. I've forgotten this the last few times. But since he's got that fast target, I have to shuffle this every time it's his turn. So we're going to go ahead and take care of this menace, because now all our guys are on the ground, so we don't have any threats. Turn the butcher to face the closest survivor. The survivor suffers one brain damage per monster level. All right, we're going to go do that. So the only good thing about losing Xena is the fact that he has no threats. So he's just going to menace the closest person, which is her. So she's going to go down to four survival, or sorry, four insanity. And now I get to stand all my guys up, and we've got to get this butcher. Now, the few problems we have going on here is... He doesn't have that bone axe anymore, which would be really good right now. But we do have our bow. So we're going to go ahead and attack with that. Now we get three speed now because we're frenzied. And it takes seven plus to hit. But I do get plus four to my strength now with this cat gut bow. So let's see if we can actually hit this butcher. So he has that three speed with the bow. He needs a seven plus. Come on, let's hit at least one. Oh, we got one hit. All right, that's fantastic. Let's see where he hit. We just have to do one damage to get that Hugh card out of there. We got the... Oh, man, I'm glad it's not... I'm not fighting with a frail weapon. All right, super dense location. Now, I get plus a billion to this thing. Plus four. Plus four to this roll. Come on, I need to get a high number. Oh, I got a one. I didn't even wound him. So we're going to go ahead and discard our armored pig shoulders, and we're going to move him over to here and attack with tooth and claw or tooth and fist or whatever because I want to get her into the blind spot with that dagger with four attacks. That's about our best plan. He's going to attack with his tooth and nail and see how it goes. Now our fist and tooth does get three speed because he's frenzied. So let's see what he gets. He gets a three, four, and a six, which isn't enough to hit him. He needed a seven. All right, that's not good at all. 
All right, Golden Moon, it's time for you to bring it on home. One, two, three, four, five. She gets back here. She's in the blind spot. She gets attacked four times because she has plus four speed. So I get to roll four dice. Come on, we need to get a six plus in order to hit. Oh, we hit twice. All right, let's see how we do. Now if we go to our hit locations, let's see what we get. We got the Furious Scrag. And, oh, and the Furious, furious Gut. Look at this. We can knock down the Butcher and gain another Courage. And the Furious Skag is, oh, this is the Death Blow card. Oh my gosh, we could actually make this happen. He's only got two wounds left, and we could put these in the, oh, let's do the Furious Gut first. And then we could do the Furious Scrag. Oh, we could take this guy down and get the Death Blow on top of it. I don't think I've ever seen this happen. All right, we're going to roll two dice to see how we do. The first one we're going to roll against is the Furious Gut. All right, we get to add three to this. Oh, we got a Lantern 10. Oh, sadly, there's no critical for that one, but that's okay. The Furious Gut, the Butcher is knocked down. All survivors gain plus one courage. We're going to go ahead and do that. But of course, first, I want to see if we're able to wound this one. Because if we're able to wound this, the battle is over. Oh, come on. I need to get another three. I get to add three to my wound roll on this one. Oh, it's a seven. We did it. Oh, I have never, ever seen this. Okay, so let's go ahead and resolve these two cards. So wounding with both of our locations, it's going to be awesome. Now, one thing I forgot is that I rolled a nine when I hit, and I forgot that Gold Moon actually has that dagger that allows her to gain plus one survival on a perfect hit. I'm going to attack roll resulting in Lantern 10, but she's also got her fighting art, which gives her plus one, so she actually gains back a survival point. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that, but there's so much more awesome things to take care of right now. First off, we're going to do the Furious Gut. The Butcher is knocked down and all survivors gain plus one courage. So we're going to give everybody plus one courage once this all is over. And now that he's now that he's, that's done, we're going to put the location there and we're going to take one wound off the stack. Now the next one is the Death Blow card. And this doesn't have a reaction on it, so this happens no matter what. Normally a reaction wouldn't take place because down here it says while the monster is knocked down, all reactions are canceled and all hit rolls succeed on a 3+. Well, of course, there is no reaction. It's just the death blow card. So let's go ahead and read it. It says, if the butcher is killed at this location, it is beheaded. Curiously, its lifeless body remains standing. The survivors rejoice at the moment changes them forever. The survivors may either select plus one permanent evasion or plus one permanent accuracy. Oh my gosh, this is so good. All right, it also says, add two to the result of your role on the butcher's rewards in the aftermath. Oh, there's so much to do. All right, we're going to take care of all of this because, of course, this card kills off his basic action, meaning now the Butcher is dead. So the first thing we have to do, first thing to get her survival back. Now she's going to gain that courage for knocking over the Butcher. Now on top of that, she's going to gain a Hunt XP for completing this, and she gets a weapon proficiency in Dagger. And now I get to choose either plus one accuracy or plus one evasion. For her, I'm going to gain accuracy, mainly because right now she's fighting with a Bone Dagger, and it only has a seven accuracy, and so getting able to hit more often is going to be good. That's going to be Gold Moon. Gold Moon, I believe, is done. I think that's awesome. Now Riverwind, he's going to gain a Hunt XP as well, and he's going to gain a Courage. Now he's going to be able to go into the Bold, and he's going to be able to get his Age uh, story events, but we're going to take care of those in the next video before we do that. We'll do it in the settlement video. That'll be when we do that. Now, of course, we also get to, I believe that's it with him. Yes, that's it. So we got a Courage and we got a Hunt XP for killing him. All right. Oh, we get to gain a permanent accuracy or evasion. I think he is also going to take accuracy, mainly because right now he's got that Monster Claw Fist and Tooth, so he gets plus one accuracy and he gets Savage with it. So we're getting plus two accuracy with our Fist and Tooth is going to be pretty good because that means we hit on a six plus, five plus for in the blind spot. That's where we went. Now, Caramon, yep, you guessed it. He's going evasion, mainly because oh, he gets to get a hunt XP and he also gets a courage. Wow, our guys are awesome. He's going to get an evasion because a lot of times he's been standing in the front ranks. So those are our characters after completing the butcher. Now, let's go see the aftermath. Now, it says right here, aftermath, victory. Oh, my gosh, we did it. The butcher is an inspiration. Any victorious survivor may immediately select axe weapon proficiency, regardless of age milestones. Any accrued ranks of weapon proficiency are lost when switching to the new weapon type. Now, we also gain these rewards down here. We get plus one hunt XP, which I already did. We also get the weapon proficiency for any weapon proficiency, weapons that we can be proficient in, which we did. We did the dagger. Now, we also get to roll on the rewards. I think at this point, I'm also going to give Karamon the axe weapon proficiency. I think that's going to be really good. We're going to write axe right up there. So he has now the axe weapon proficiency, even though he did it off camera. All right. And so now we also get to roll on this rewards table. 
So our rewards say roll a d10 and add the butcher's level to the result. The group gains any listed resources or gear. Add them to the settlement storage. So we get to add one for the butcher's level. And then because of that furious cry, which just bonkers, it says add two to the result of your roll on the butcher's rewards in the aftermath. So we're going to go ahead and add plus two to this. So let's see what we get. An eight plus three, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we get eleven butcher's cleaver rare gear D5 broken lantern resources and a hunk of living flesh used to regrow one dismembered limb right now. Oh, right now, that's not gonna be too good. Oh, it's too bad. Maybe I can regrow two. I can regrow her limbs. She got them ripped off, but I don't think that's how it works. Sadly, she's gonna be dead for sure. Now, the deal is, I don't think I can use this. I have two people back home that don't have arms, but I don't think I can use it on them because it has to be used right now. So instead, I'm just going to take my D5 broken lantern resources. We got, oh my gosh, we got 10. So we got five broken lantern resources and we also got the butcher's cleaver. So let's take a look at those. So here's our broken lantern resource. It's just a scrap. It says remains of an extinguished lantern. So I really can't use this, at least right at this moment. There may be a time where I am able to use these at some point. Now, more importantly, check this thing out. The Butcher's Cleaver. It's a weapon melee axe other. It is two speed, five plus to hit, and it does five strength. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. And it can be paired, so I can actually get another one of these. It says sentient. Must be insane to activate. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> Irreplaceable. When you die, archive this card. Oh no. All right, so if somebody dies holding it, I will have to lose this card. Now, of course, let's compare that to our other axe. We had this bone axe. Sadly, we don't have the bone axe anymore. The bone axe says, or actually has a two speed. Oh, and that's a little bit better accuracy and way better strength. And it's not frail. So that's the good thing. All right, so there we go. We've got our butcher's cleaver and our broken lantern. What an absolute victory. This is awesome. And there you have it, we have defeated the Butcher. We only have three guys left, but that's okay. And not only that, we got to see something I have never seen before. We were able to take him out with his death blow. Oh, that was absolutely astronomically amazing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. This battle was probably one of my favorite battles I've ever had in a long time. Not only in Kingdom of Death, but just in general. It was so much fun fighting against this guy. Now, of course, we did lose poor old Zena here. She kind of fell to the butcher, but that's okay. We got three other guys. We're gonna go into the settlement phase now and let's see what can happen. I also wanna give you a disclaimer. This is as far as I've ever gotten in this game. So whatever happens from here on out, I have absolutely no clue what's coming. I did know that the butcher was coming and I have actually fought against him one time, but from here on out, I have never experienced more of this game. And thanks again to everybody in the community to be able to help me out in these videos. I want to make sure that we get these as right as we can so that people watching can understand how to play this game better and also experience the awesomeness that is Kingdom Death. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol, and you'll know when the settlement phase comes. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I'd love to hear from everyone. Are you excited to see where our civilization goes from here? If so, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. So